Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, I've had a lot of requests to talk about snaps, flat packages, app images, things like that. And uh, in light of the fact that there was a, we'll just call it a pup, a potentially unwanted program discovered in a snap package this last week, I thought it'd be a telling time to talk about uh, the snaps, flat packages, app images, the pros, the cons, things like that. And so first and foremost, what is it we're talking about when we get into these snaps and flat packages, app images? Uh, first and foremost, these are prepackaged systems very similar to how you would run an app on a smartphone. Everything required to run it is packaged within it. They are compiled that way. You download the item and then you just um, you you either install it from there or you just run it, whatever the the case may be. And um, of course, there's uh, the differences between those three items. Uh, there's a little bit of difference. Um, there's some differences in, in how they integrate with the GUI. There's a little bit of difference in where they are available, how you install them, things like that. And I don't really want to talk here about uh, about those individual differences. A lot of that's because I don't have all of the technical know-how to exactly identify what is the difference between these and those, et cetera, et cetera. Um, other than to say things like, you know, Snap uses um, uses App Armor, uh, Flatpak uses namespaces. Um, snaps can only utilize the dependencies directly within them. Flatpaks can utilize their dependencies or other dependencies from other Flatpaks. Um, so there's a there's a, a little kind of nuances in between uh, in between those those different ideas. Um, but ultimately, what I want to talk about is what are the pros versus the cons of of this whole Linux community moving down this entire road of prepackaged images such as snaps, flat packs, and app images. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about just uh, just kind of briefly here. Um, so with all that being said. Um, the major advantages, what is great about having these as options? Uh, we'll just call these prepackaged uh, applications. What's the advantage? Well, number one, um, all of the dependencies come with it. And so that does a couple things. First is it makes sure that the application utilizes exactly the versions of dependencies that they run with the best. And so this means that you have a more stable application. But the flip side of that coin that is also equally good is that you don't have to clutter your main operating system with a variety of dependencies that may actually introduce some instabilities in your operating system itself. So in that respect, it's a very good thing to have everything separate and isolated. Okay, the next major uh, advantage is you can have different versions of, of the applications. So if you want to have three or four different versions of one particular application for whatever reason, maybe you're just testing, maybe there's something that was changed and the older version does one task really, really well, you have the ability to do that. You can have multiple versions installed on the same computer. Um, and then another major advantage is that if you uninstall the package, everything kind of goes out with it. Now, um, one of the di disadvantages, um, some of the disadvantages, number one is the space. It does take a lot more hard drive space to be installing all these because you will end up with multiple duplicates of a lot of different dependencies. That's not a as big of a deal as it used to be because that hard drives are getting larger and larger. However, it might be a bigger deal because we've kind of reached that peak and now hard drives are getting smaller and smaller again. It's not too uncommon to get a 250 gigabyte SSD in a computer now instead of a one terabyte mechanical hard drive. If you have a one terabyte mechanical hard drive, go crazy. But if you have a very small hard drive and a portable computer, like my one of my writing computers, in fact, I think both of my writing computers, they have very small hard drives. Um, my Lenovo, uh, it's a, I think it's an S21e, uh, which is one of the, my, my uh, Peppermint writing computer, that only has a 32 gigabyte hard drive in it. Uh, and that is, uh, I believe that is soldered in. I can't remember if it's soldered in or not. But uh, regardless, it's a very small, uh, it's a very small hard drive, and I can't clutter the whole thing up with multiple, multiple copies of tons of dependencies. It's kind of better to not have to do that. Um, another major disadvantage is that the 
if there are security vulnerabilities inside of the dependencies, the package needs to be updated. And if the people maintaining those packages do not update it correctly, you could end up with security vulnerabilities and you just want to be able to run this package, but the dependency may or may not work. Okay, that's another disadvantage of those. So there are clear reasons to use these. There's clear reasons not to use these. Uh, what about making the general transition? Um, one of the biggest things that, that you need to keep in mind is that they will store their configuration files in different places. Now, I had reported once on a, um, on a uh, Big Daddy Linux uh, late night, Saturday night discussion that uh, I had an issue with importing my custom effects from Caden Live. So particularly on my other channel, where I do a whole lot more video editing than I do here, I have a whole panel of custom effects that I have built over the time I've been building the channel. So if I need to reinstall Caden Live like I needed to do when this computer blew up a few months ago, um, I had to install the files in different locations. It can take a little bit of time to figure out where all those different file locations are. Um, on flat packets and uh, dot app forward slash and then you know hunt down your app and then you'll find your configuration file. I did report that uh, incorrectly because I did not know how to fix that, but I have since fixed that. It's just a difference of location where that individual file happens to be. All right, so that is uh, that's one of those one of those issues is that. Um, Figuring, just, just kind of changing your workflow a little bit, that is definitely not a big deal, definitely not a reason to change. Now, what's my personal take? Am I excited about this? Or am I mediocre about this? Hmm, that's a hard call. I'm not a huge fan of the App Store type model. I think it introduces a little bit more laziness. I am a fan of more stability. One of the downsides of the App Store type model is too many people can produce too many things a little bit too easily and it becomes simple to download a potentially unwanted program. And that's what somebody had identified. And according to the reports, it didn't seem as though the guy was trying to hide what he was doing. He was more probably trying to see if anyone would notice and people did notice pretty quick. So. You want to make sure that just like the app stores on your phones, you want to make sure you're only installing app images, flat packs, snaps from reputable, trusted places. I have no problem installing it from, you know, a, a, an organization like like GIMP. You know, GIMP will have the app image. Um, I trust the people that put out GIMP. I wouldn't have a problem with that. But if it's just some weird random application that's new on the scene you want to treat it with a little bit more scrutiny. Do not download that unless you either A, have the ability to audit the code or B, plan on doing a lot of security checks after you do so to make sure nothing goofy is going on. Okay, so that's one of those things to, to keep in mind. Um, another good reason to use them is updates. If I update my system and it updates some dependency packages found with security vulnerabilities and maybe five applications use that same dependency, if I update that dependency and four of those work with the new updated version and one of them does not, it introduces an instability in that one of my applications now quits working. The snaps, app images, etc. solve that problem. However, they have to all be updated independently of each other. And that's also a ton more bandwidth to download those. What's better, to pull in one dependency and fix that one dependency, or to download the entire application multiple times um, because there's a vulnerability and all five applications needs to update that same exact dependency. Those are the types of things that we are talking about. So is this a good move for us to be moving into? I think it's one that we move into with a little bit, I think we need to have a little bit more caution than we have, but I don't want to decry it as complete, being a completely bad idea altogether. Um, there's advantages, there's disadvantages, and we need to weigh the advantages. Now what I did on this computer, um, I'm running OBS, the absolute latest version, which is not in the Linux Mint repository. I'm running Kden Live, the latest version. I'm not running that in the repository. I have connected the repos um, to, to those. So I'm actually, if you go into my software sources, I'm actually on the most recent stable for each of those rather than utilizing either the app images or the, uh, or the, uh, 
the repository uh, the repositories so that way I always make sure that I have the latest because this is a video production computer and OBS and Caden Life have both made a ton of great strides and I want to go ahead and, and be using the latest applications of those so that's kind of my my take uh, what do you guys think is this a good idea is this a bad idea uh, my overall take-home message I think it's a fine idea. We just need to approach it with a little bit more caution than we probably are, uh, keeping in mind that, that there are very good uses and reasons to be moving in this model, but there's also some negatives. We need to remember and look at those negatives and ask ourselves if the positive outweighs the negative. In many cases, I say the answer is yes, but in, the, in that it could lead us more to like an app store thing, you know, that... Apple and Google Play stores, they are a mess. They are a mess with junky, fraudulent, pup, malware-laced applications. And I fear if we do not put on the brakes a little bit and be a little bit more cautious, that same exact thing could happen and we could introduce a whole lot of problems inside of our otherwise fairly secure Linux machines. So that's kind of the take. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. So thank you for watching. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can check out our main support page, switch to links.com forward slash support. That's going to give you all of the basic ways that you can help support the channel. If you want to get something like a t-shirt, a coffee cup, a mouse pad, you can check out uh, shop.switchtolinux.com. That will redirect you over to Spreadshirt where you can browse our store of different designs and uh, products. And you can also check out Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. So thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.